Welcome back to AP World Simplified. Today we'll be discussing the gunpowder Muslim states of the early modern era with the Ottoman, Safavid, and Mughal empires. We'll start first with the Ottoman Empire, started by a group of invading Muslim Turks coming from Central Asia, um, invading and conquering and incorporating the areas of Anatolia, which are now modern day Turkey, as well as getting into the uh, Balkan regions of Europe and conquering and finally ending the Eastern Roman Empire or Byz Byzantine Empire uh, by sacking Constantinople in 1453. Now, while this empire did officially begin in Anatolia and in southern Europe um, in 1299, uh, it would last all the way through uh, knocking out the Byzantine Empire, uh, conquering most of North Africa, getting further into Europe, challenging Europe, uh, conquering a good portion of the Middle East, and lasting all the way till roughly after World War II uh, in 1922. Now, the Ottoman Empire would be a Muslim state, and it would also depend heavily upon agriculture. And while that would be a weakness later on as they failed to industrialize, um, their dependence on agriculture would serve them well at least until the Industrial Revolution came along um, propelling Western Europe um, into the uh, preeminent position in Europe and the greater world. Now this economy is based primarily on slave labor and as up to in, in 1605 I believe it was pulled that up to 20% of all people under Ottoman rule were considered slaves uh, working on this agricultural peasant based system. The Ottoman Empire would be extensive going from North Africa into South, Southern and Eastern Europe, the Middle East, and the Caucasus region um, of uh, Asia. And it would be a significant challenge to uh, Christian Europe, um, particularly in three instances where uh, there were sort of maximum extent slash turning point battles um, that were, were narrowly won by the Europeans and stopped uh, Ottoman conquest. Uh, twice there was a siege that was stopped um, at Vienna as the Ottoman Turks expanded, taking Hungary, the Balkans, uh, vast regions of what is now Bulgaria and Romania, uh, being stopped only by an alliance of Catholic states um, in the 1500s and 1600s at Vienna, as well as a naval battle around what is now um, Greece, uh, known as the Battle of Lepanto, uh, which is a, which was another holy uh, Catholic alliance uh, against the uh, Ottoman Empire. In all three cases, the Ottoman Empire did lose. Uh, thus stopping its expansion and losing control of the Mediterranean. But until that point, it had expanded more massively than, um, than any previous Muslim state, with the exception of the Abbasid and Umayyad Caliphates. One particular ruler who expanded the Ottoman Empire uh, substantially was uh, the ruler known as Suleiman the Great in the 16th century. And uh, this society uh, under the Ottoman Turks rule, uh, whether they be uh, other Muslims as in Arabs, uh, or Christians in Europe, they applied the same general rules under Muslim states uh, as were applied under the caliphates. That were the second class st uh, status for Christians and Jews, um, as well as the uh, hizya or jizya tax that was paid. An additional control that was put over the peoples of Southern Europe uh, and Eastern Europe in particular was a Christian specific practice uh, known as blood tax or, or devshir. Now this was a policy in which uh, the Turks wanted to control their own Turkic elites uh, and Christian elites and Arab elites that may challenge their power, wanted to establish a uh, specified loyal uh, military force uh, to the Sultan. That elite group would be known as Janissaries. However, not all of the people I'm about to talk about became Janissaries. There was this uh, blood tax, as I mentioned, where the Ottoman Empire would go into specifically Christian regions in Anatolia and Southern and Eastern Europe. Uh, that were under Ottoman rule, and they would take young boys aged 18 and upwards of, into their teens, I think I've even seen as, as late as old as 20 years old, uh, taken from their families, uh, converted to Islam and made as part of the Muslim state, put into the Muslim military, um, and even in some cases castrated uh, to serve as uh, harem or harem guards uh, for uh, women's quarters. Now, while this practice would end in about 1704, uh, with various attempts to be reinstated, it was a particularly, particularly brutal and uh, barbaric practice that was engaged and pressed upon the Christian populations uh, of the Ottoman Empire. Now, to demonstrate the power and prestige of these sultans, uh, the Ottoman Empire practiced a form of uh, power, I guess you would say, displaying. Um, or demonstrating by providing miniature paintings of the sultans to the peoples of the Ottoman Empire. Along with the agricultural based economy, they also utilized gunpowder weapons. Uh, and while the innovations of Western Europe would 
soon surpassed them with industrialization. They were a formidable opponent up until that point uh, through the years of those gunpowder weapons. Officially, the Ottoman Empire did adopt a religious practice of Sunni-specific Islam, which would bring them into conflict uh, with a neighboring Muslim state known as the Safavid Empire, or dynasty. Now, while the Safavid Empire would not last quite as long as the Ottoman Empire, uh, ruling from about 1506 to the early 18th century, uh, it would have some notable similarities and differences. It was also a Muslim state. It also utilized gunpowder weapons. However, this is the first state uh, to officially adopt Shia Islam as its state religion. It would also be the last uh, great Persian dynasty, uh, and it would, as I mentioned before, come into contact, direct contact, uh, and conflict with uh, the Sunni um, Ottoman Empire. They would engage in a 200-ish years long struggle known as the Ottoman Safavid conflicts uh, where both states would experience times of expansion and retraction uh, and overall it would greatly weaken the militaries and economies of the two great um, Muslim states. Now this Safavid Empire itself became known somewhat as or gave a, a current identity for what is known as the nation of Iran uh, as Shia Islam is the dominant state religion the official state religion, uh, and it is also dominant in the immediate regions around uh, Iran where the Safavid Empire used to uh, be established. So parts of Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, etc. Uh, all have certain sections that are predominantly Shia uh, due to the spread of Shia Islam and official state adoption by this Safavid Empire. Now the Safavid Persian Empire would continue a dynastic rule under the Shah that had extended previously for over a thousand years uh, and would come to end officially in the 1979 uh, Iranian or Islamic Revolution uh, when the people of Iran would remove the Shah uh, due to its uh, collusion with the Western states, most notably uh, the United States. Finally, the Indian subcontinent, we have the Mughal Empire, which lasts roughly from 1526 uh, to 1857. It would be mostly Turco-Mongolic and even some Persian invaders coming from the Chagatai um, and Persian region. Now, these invaders were Islamic, uh, they were Muslim, and they are going to uh, establish a Muslim state. However, they are going to be far more, t more tolerant than their predecessors under the Delhi Sultanate, who were much more known for their confrontational approach uh, to stomping out Hinduism and other uh, dissident religions and establishing an, uh, an official Muslim state. Now these conflicts uh, greatly weakened and caused instability in the Delhi Sultanate, and the Mughal Empire would do a much better job of allowing for multiple cultures under a uh, centralized state. Rulers such as Akbar the Great would uh, add states by conquest and diplomacy, and under the Mughal dynasty, until the arrival of the British and the rise of the Hindu Maratha Confederacy uh, and states, would endure a period of prosperity economically, militaristically, uh, and also uh, stability within its own empire. The Mughals did a wonderful job of incorporating the local kingdoms within India, which had been the Indian subcontinent, I should say, that had always been a problem for past um, empires that attempted to do so. And what they did was they employed a somewhat increasingly common tactic throughout the world, including Europe, in which they would take these local nobles and princes, and instead of controlling them directly by force, they would include them actually in the central government, uh, rewarding them, increasing the amount of power they had. And they did this with the, the title or set of titles known as Zamindar or Zamindari. And these uh, local rulers and princes that would once had previously resisted um, efforts to centralize the state, they were included as tax collectors in their area, responsible for uh, more or less uh, collecting or setting up the collection of taxes, passing those on to the central government, and they were awarded with greater titles, authority, as well as some monetary incentives. And that did a pretty decent job, along with the cultural toleration uh, and religious toleration allowed by the Mughal emperors. And even as their power declined, it was a much more uh, cohesive and less conflict-ridden uh, empire, uh, as at least compared to the previous Delhi Sultanate. One of the things the Mughal Empire is most well known for is its extravagant architecture that was established and built during its uh, height, economic height, and militaristic and expansive height. Um, one example, of course, being the Taj Mahal, which was the uh, tomb built by an Indian uh, prince. And 
Just like the uh, palaces of Europe at the time, this was a time that leaders were attempting to demonstrate their power uh, and authority by constructing either large architectural uh, monuments or by distributing life-size or miniature paintings. And the uh, Mughal dynasty or empire was no exception to that general rule of the early modern era. Now those are the basic fundamentals of these gunpowder Muslim states during the early modern era, and that should be enough to prepare you, or more than enough to prepare you, for the actual AP test. And don't forget, if you enjoy enjoyed this video uh, and want access to more videos or other resources to help AP students or teachers for AP World, uh, be, feel free to check out my website at morganapteaching.com. Thanks for watching.